Okay, we're going to talk about different types of transmission uh, pumps. And in the past, and, rel and even in the, in the re relatively recent history, we still have, uh, sometimes we'll find it's called a rotor type pump, or a G-rotor, G-E-R-O-T-O-R, okay, G-rotor. And, um, of course, this is part of the pump assembly, obviously. This is what we call a stator half, because this has got the stator support shaft. Anyhow, we have the large area, or the inlet, and the smaller area, or the outlet. The same is true over here. The large inlet and the small outlet. Fluid comes in, gets squoze down, comes out high pressure. Okay? Even as I lift these rotors out of, out of their position, we see a large cavity as the fluid gets squoezed down, it gets delivered to a smaller cavity. Okay. Well, ASC would like to, sometimes they'll ask you, what kind of pump is this? And of course, this is a G rotor. They'll also ask you, what to, is the technician measuring here? And of course, that would be the outer or driven rotor to pump uh, to the pump housing. And this one actually measures closer to about three thousandths. Two thousandths, as I just used, was falling, you know, fell in there pretty easy. Three thousandths has some drag. Okay. The G rotor, the inner, the driven one, sorry, the driven one. Okay. We'll get him to fall in here eventually. There we go. A measurement that might have you uh, observe or look at would say, well, what is the technician measuring here? Well, he's measuring the clearance between the inner rotor tip and the outer rotor's tip. And I can fit two thousandths in there, and that's where we are. Okay, so that's a second measurement, uh, inner to outer rotor tip measurement. A third uh, measurement would be using a straight edge, and it's going to be measuring the clearance between the face of the pump and the face of the gears. So let's call this uh, rotor face to pump housing. Now two thousandths is, is probably lifting this up a little tiny bit. I don't have a one thousandth feeler gauge. A one thousandth would probably slide through here. I mean out here where it's resting on the, whoops, there we go, where it's resting on the edge. I guess I'm not in all the way. There we go, now I'm in all the way. Okay, out here, you know, we're not going to fit anything because that's resting on the edge of the pump. Okay, but here on the face of the gear, the side clearance, okay, pump gear side clearance might also be a, a term they use. Uh, rotor side clearance to pump housing. Okay, enough of the G rotor. Let's pull in a gear, and it's much the same. We have an inner or driven gear by the torque converter, and we have an outer gear, okay? We have the large area and the small area. So the, the fluid is coming into this pump, okay, down here, and it gets squoze down and delivered out here off to the rest of the transmission. If you can see that large area and this small area where it comes out. And I'll put this back in place, the driven gear. And one measurement they might ask about, once again, is, wh is what is the clearance between the driven gear and the housing? And I'm going to try two thousandths again. And two seems to fit really easily. Let's try three thousandths. And again, three thousandths has got some resistance or drag to it. Okay. On the, this is the crescent, this crescent-shaped device, right? They might also ask you, what is the technician measuring here? And you would say outer gear to crescent clearance. Okay, have the tips of these teeth worn down. And again, this is an entire this is a, it, this entire pump is a crest, or cast iron as well, and they hold up pretty good. You got to have some a lot of debris going through the system to chew up a cast iron pump. It happens, but uh, here's three thousandths and. I could probably fit a four thousandths one in there, but I'm not going to go uh, go over that anymore. Uh, so, again, uh, the driven gear to the crescent 
would also be a measurement here, okay, is what they would have you select. They don't make it difficult, but you need to know some terminology. Inner and outer gear, crescent, and of course the, the clearance between the driven gear, or the drive gear and the crescent, and the driven gear and the crescent, and of course the driven gear and the housing. One more, just like the G-Rotor. They want to know what is the technician measuring here, and of course I got a straight edge and it's resting on the face of the house pump housing or pump body and this this uh, driven gear or I'm sorry the drive gear has got easily two thousandths clearance uh, the driven gear barely fits two of course I'm over where the crescent is let's get over here maybe and it's mm, probably closer to one and a half thousandths okay we gotta be able to have some clearance between these the face of these gears and when its cover is put on because when these gears get hot, they'll expand a little bit. And we want them to always turn freely. Okay. Okay. So that's the gear or g rotor type pumps. Let's now focus. And I've got this pump resting on a torque converter. Okay. A uh, variable vane pump. Really common, obviously, in today's world. Um, i got one more, one more bolt to pull off here. And this will be all opened up. All right, I'm going to pull off again the stator half of the pump. Here's the stator support shaft for the torque converter's stator, right? And we have much the same things. We have a larger opening and a smaller opening. Looks a little different, but the principles are the same. I'll set that aside. Now, um, I'm going to rotate the torque converter because, again, the converter is what rotates this pump, right? So, there we go. We'll get things lined back up. And this rotates. And, of course, the fluid would come in a large side and be delivered to, the, to another smaller, smaller side, right? And the principle of rotation is no different. But even on these pumps, they'll have you uh, use a straight edge. Okay, so having removed this from the torque converter, idea, the torque converter, of course, rotates these blades, okay, this variable vane pump. And when engine load is light, the pressure regulator, uh, uh, which is a, a valve inside the pump here, this valve inside here, okay, it's going to uh, perhaps divert fluid, and the electronic pressure control solenoid operates that valve. It's going to reduce pressure and volume by moving this slide ring, okay? And as you can tell, these, this side and this side become more equal as the slide ring gets moved. And that would be like cruise RPM or cruising speeds, light loads. This would be like acceleration on heavy loads, supplying you know the clutches with high pressure. And probably the only measurement for these, and only a machinist would have to worry about this measurement on this kind of pump, because sometimes if the pump face and the pocket that all this sits in gets all chewed up, they can actually resurface this. They'll knock about ten thousandths of an inch off that pocket and then I'll have to knock all a little off here as well to keep that pocket you know depth. Whatever they whatever they remove inside that pocket, they've got to remove out here so that this uh, arrangement up here, these these components up here don't have any kind of uh, you know interference. And so about the only specification on these of course would be uh, this slide ring and the drive gear, okay, that supports all these blades. Uh, a clearance between the pump's housing, okay, and that slide, which I'm not really registering anything. I am on the pump, uh, the, the drive gear, okay, but the slide that moves, I guess it doesn't have to be as free because it only moves slightly, whereas this is constantly rotating. So there is a difference between these two, okay. Never seen any specifications on that, but again, a machinist would have to worry about it if they've resurfaced this pump, again, the pocket. 
and this surface here. And whatever they take off inside the pocket, they got to take off outside on the face. So there's our pumps. We got variable vein, variable displacement, gear, and G rotor. Okay. Each gauge. It's about a $200 tool if you can appreciate that. It looks pretty simple, doesn't it? But it helps us determine some clearance so we don't ruin a transmission. So we're going to come down and Calvin here is going to set it on the transmission housing where the pump rides. It's a nice flat surface there. And this little rod is sitting down inside on top of the sun gear. So both sides are nothing but more than a stabilizer. He's got it resting on the sun gear. He's tightened all the knobs. Yep. Now we're going to flip the gauge over and go put it on the pump. Because that's the next thing that goes in this transmission. Let me get the camera over here. So, so now we've got the H gauge on the pump. And we're going to measure the clearance between this little gap and this little shim here. There's a shim here. Go ahead, Curtis, and I think the specification is 8 to 15. Yep. And he's using what? how thick? Uh, 8 thousandths. 8. And we're, look, we're looking pretty close to 8, aren't we? Or yep. Could you get a 9 in there or not? Uh, I can try. I mean, we got 8. There's no way you're going to fit 15 in there. So we've, no. we've, we've reached our, our goal. Uh, yeah. But, uh, again, this H gauge, we don't want this to put any pressure on the sun gear down inside the transmission. We've got to have a little bit of clearance. As things expand, 9 I think works. We're getting a 9 in there. Okay. I think we've got the message yeah. across. Maybe a 10 will go, but I'll bet you we're about done. That gear, not on the teeth, but right beside the teeth. Yes, right there. Yeah. Okay. And that's an automatic transmission H gauge.